Guys, hi, this is Assignment Expert, and here's our task for today. Two blocks are sliding on a frictionless track. The first block is released from the height 5 meters, and the mass of this block is 5 kilos. At the front of this block, there is a north pole of a strong magnet, which repels the north pole of the same magnet which is at the end of the second block, and the mass of the second block is 10 kilos. This block is initially at rest. After the elastic collision, the first block can rise at some height. Our task is to find the maximum height at which it can rise. So, first of all, we need to find the initial velocity of the first block. For that, we will use the law of conservation of energy. The kinetic energy is equal to the potential energy. So, in our case, uh, we have m1 times v1i squared over 2 equals m1 times g times h, where m1 is the mass of the first block, v1i is the initial velocity of the first block, and here we have the same mass, the free-fall acceleration, and our height. From here we can cancel out m1, and we get that v1i equals the square root of gh times 2, so 2gh. And this is equal to the square root of 2 times 9.8 times 5 and gives us 9.9 .9 meters per second. Alright guys, so here we found the initial speed of the first block. Now let's find the final speed of both blocks. For that we will use the law of conservation of momentum. So we have m1 times v1 initial plus uh, the initial momentum of the second block and this block is at rest, therefore we have zero. And on the right side we have m1 times v1 final plus m2 times v2 final. So here we have m1 and m2 are the masses of the first and the second block and v1i is the initial speed of the first block and v1f, v2f are the final speed of the first and the second block. Now also we know that this is the elastic collision, therefore there is a conservation of kinetic energy. So we also have the relation m1 times v1 initial squared over 2 equals m1 times v1 final squared over 2 plus m2 times v2 final squared over 2. So again we don't have the initial term for the second block. And this is actually a system of two equations. From them we can derive both v1f and v2f. But the second one, we don't need to find the answer in this example. So let's focus on V1F. V1F from this system equals M1 minus M2 over M1 plus M2 times V1 initial. And this is equal to 5 minus 10 over 5 plus 10 times 9.9 .9. and this is equal to negative 3.3 meters per second and here the negative sign means that the direction of the block after the collision is opposite to the initial direction okay so we found the final speed of the first block and finally we can find the maximum height at which it can rise after the collision. For that we will again apply the law of conservation of energy. In this case we have m1 times v1 final squared over 2 and on the right side we have m1 times g times h max, the height at which the block rises. From here we derive h max. 
and it gives us uh, it gives us v1 f squared divided by 2g which is equal to negative 3.3 squared over 2 times 9.8 and this is equal to 0 0.556 meters so here is the max height at which the first block rises after the collision thanks for watching us see you